Good morning, meteorologist Mike Prangley, and we got Tim Carista in the house, and I want to thank Brooks for helping us out. We've got the update on the hurricane. So I go to bed last night. Well, I really couldn't sleep because we had these models that came in that shifted east of Florida. I mean, we could actually totally miss this thing, the entire state. Now, this doesn't mean we're not going to have big impacts. This is a huge storm, a thousand miles wide, but uh, check out what I saw. First saw it on the American model. That's the one we chose yesterday morning on GMJ, and the latest model had it coming up just trying to brush South Florida, but just staying off South Florida and at least 150 miles east of us and then moving up to the Carolinas. So that was the update that I saw. So as we're taking a look at some of the changes, what we're seeing is this storm picking up steam, moving faster, and that cold front is also moving faster. So if you get these two things combined, you're gonna get a stronger Southwest wind and this thing is gonna have to turn sooner rather than later. Okay, so right now... That makes me so happy. <laughs> oh, okay, Katie's very happy. Yeah, she's been ordering this up, so we'll give her some credit. 185 mile per hour winds, but yeah, we need to check back and keep checking those apps because we've got a category five. We're gonna be talking about these poor islands this morning, uh, seeing that eye go over there. And then we're watching Puerto Rico as it stays just to the north of Puerto Rico, Hispaniola by Thursday. Notice the winds could come down a bit. It'll interact with a little bit of land. You've got 4,000 foot uh, mountains in Puerto Rico and uh, in Hispaniola and Puerto Rico even has some uh, hills over a thousand feet. So this will rip apart some of the circulation, but notice still a category four heading up toward, uh, boy, the north coast of Cuba Saturday and just trying to brush South Florida. So right now the Hurricane Center hasn't shown a shift in this track. This is what I'm gonna wait on this morning. Will we start to see this cone shift to the east? And here's why, uh, because we zoom in. Well, first of all, there's the latest track. South Florida is still my main concern. That's been our concern all along in the Carolinas, okay? So there's the latest spaghetti pots and Brooks. What do you think about this? You like what you're seeing here? I like it better than yesterday. And you hear about the American model that I favored yesterday over the Euro, but one of my other favorite models is this pink line, uh, the TVCN. It takes the best of the best and it averages all out. And this keeps it at least 150 to 200 miles east of Jacksonville, which would give us more of a tropical storm type event rather than hurricane force gusts. So that makes sense. But again, South Carolina, Watch out, it's a monster heading to the north. Okay, so what does this mean? When are things gonna go downhill? Here's Saturday, we'll start to see some increasing showers in the northeast wind, 20 to 25. As we go into Sunday, all right, we're gonna to start to see those ice bars kink up. We got that circulation offshore and we're really gonna to start to see those tropical storm force gusts along the beach. That's late Sunday night. Inland, not so bad. Lake City, Flacca, closer to 20 mile per hour winds. And then it peaks out Monday morning. Remember a quicker, faster movement. So late Sunday night, Monday morning, there's so those winds that sustained, could be sustained tropical storm force winds and some higher gusts. So I'm keeping the winds mainly between 40 and 60 miles per hour, I-95 east. And look, by late Monday night, Brooks, we're gonna sleep like babies. I'm gonna say Ooh. goodbye, Irma, but we're That's also gonna be watching about. the Carolinas by then and Georgia, especially up towards Savannah as well. So let's put it all together. The new bullet points, and we've been very consistent as a weather team. We've been saying Sunday into Monday, so we still have that. Winds, we've had 60 severe. We're still keeping it at 40 to 60. It's a huge storm. Tides two to five. Now I may be more concerned about a surge. We gotta watch this carefully. Um, four to eight foot, four to eight inch rainfall totals. Okay, so yesterday we had six to 12. So if that center stays a little farther east, uh, we're talking about uh, less rain. So again, high pressure, nosing down, jet stream front. Looks like it's gonna turn a little sooner. So this red track here, uh, which we favored yesterday. Maybe we're gonna, we're gonna adjust this just a little bit farther east this morning on GMJ, so stay tuned for that. But again, we're gonna talk about hurricane warnings. Your seven day forecast cooler than that, uh, low 80s in many areas. That'll help keep Irma, it looks like, farther to the east. But again, our big days for the wind and the rain look to be Sunday into especially Monday morning, and then we dry out Tuesday. Boy, that's 79. Uh, haven't seen that in quite some time. And forever. <laughs> forever. So thanks for joining me. We'll do more Facebook, especially at six o'clock. I'm going to get ready for the show. And finally, yeah, it's just nice to share some better news. But again, big concerns still remain uh, and we'll stay calm and stay prepared.